Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, as Rick just said, we have a panel of guests. But what he didn't say, and I haven't noticed, that that's a pre-recorded thing. I guess I never listened to it. He is supposed to be saying expert guests, people who have... I we have, we have searched the searched the entire community <laughs> okay. to find these people who know what they're talking about. Okay. And today, we're going to talk about Labor Day, or labor, but basically Labor Day. Now, Labor Day, you know it's Labor Day when you turn on the morning news and the first 10 minutes are file... File footage of airports with people standing in line and um, some guy that's paying getting paid way too much talking about flight delays and how crowded the airports and the roads are and it'll be the busiest Labor Day since whenever. Some reason or other, they seem to think we need to know that. So uh, let's get started by go- <laughs> going around the table here and having everybody introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Brett Cecil. I live in Port Orford, and I'm currently running for uh, state representative in the 1st District. Okay, and I'm Rick McNamer, volunteer here at KCIW. And uh, uh, one quick note, too, if anybody out there wants, if you're listening, I hope you're listening, um, you can text in a question or comment at our text line, 541-661-4098. And as Ray says, the operators are standing by. <laughs> I will be the operator today. So go ahead. Okay, I'm Robert O'Sullivan, and my labor roots go back far. Uh, my dad was buried with the ITU, International Typographical Union, 65-year pin. Uh, and uh, they they had pensions that helped me grow up, and I, he was 65 when I was born. It was a rather unusual childhood. But uh, anyway, I, I have labor roots, which are, I guess, congenital, and uh, mm-hmm. been in, in California. I was active in democratic politics in a lot of ways a long time. And uh, in my late 40s, I became a high school teacher and was involved in labor as a local rep from the, the union and that sort of thing as well. It's been working since 2015. So this 65-year pin means that he worked in this job for 65 years? Yes. And, and what, what was the job? He was a, uh, a typesetter on the big old linotype machines. In fact, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Yes, uh, but people listening don't know that. Huh? You might yeah. have to explain. <laughs> well, and, uh, and so, well, that's a historical uh, job. Okay, then, so a, sure. a, a, a linotype machine is basically you pour lead in and it spits out... And it must be, I can't imagine doing that for 65 years. Uh, well, he did. And that partially, I guess, because he had me late in his life. Oh. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, I visited him sometimes at work, and I just remember what an awful setting it seemed to be. Noisy, lead, smells, steam, uh, and uh, uh, and part of the history of labor in this country has to do with making work safe. And nowadays, it sort of is because there are agencies like OSHA and there are other things going on. But uh, uh, workers' compensation, uh, which is an important thing for anybody injured on his job, didn't really come in until the early parts of the 20th century. Yeah, uh, And uh, even though there were terrible fires, there were terrible... Uh, massacres and other things happening related to to working people, they they very often didn't have any real health protection for them. I th- I think probably today jobs like you described are are probably rarer and rarer. Even in manufacturing situations, I think they're more not necessarily sterile, but they're cleaner and and certainly they well. There's concern for the workers because they have to be concerned for the way. And thanks to the unions for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I there there's so many things today which we really don't know how safe they are. Uh, like I just saw a big report about all of the uh, uh, 
sewage waste that is being used as fertilizer. And in the process, uh, what is it, BPAs, uh, the, the plastic yes. oh. uh, thing, is getting into massive amounts of fertilizer being distributed on farms and how that affects farm work- workers. And, and sometimes it's very uh, destructive to the animals. And uh, so how safe is that environment? And, and the meatpacking plants that might get involved in, in all of that happening. They, they, they've come a long way, though, since, uh, oh, what was the name? The, the Jungle? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, but um, what, what was the name of that book? The Jungle by Upton. Oh, the, the Jungle yeah. was the name of the book. Okay, yes. Uh, if anybody out there has not read that book, I'd suggest you do read it, and then you'll probably become a vegetarian or something <laughs> very quickly. Had to do with the stockyards in Chicago, yeah. which were a pretty awful place. And, and the funny thing is, the book is, is, a, is a lot about how badly the meat was treated. The stuff was dropped on the floor and the sawdust, and it got picked up and reused, and, and they were using, wiping the maggots off. Anyway, but mm-hmm. the book was not, his intention was not to expose the, the meatpacking industry as his intention was to point out the uh, labor inequities, mm-hmm. which I guess he took care of both of them because it um, was the um, the federal agency that, that that inspects food now came about primarily because of that book. I, I can't say specifically mm-hmm. because, of that, but it certainly raised the issue yeah, well, publicly in ways that had never been issued before. Very shocking. Before, yeah. So... Well, I, I, I'm sure a, a lot of this, the great stuff that we have out there nowadays, it might anger some people, but again, brought about by unions, organized labor, if you will. And yeah, there's been problems there. We can talk about that too. But um, yeah, health, safety of the employees. It's shocking uh, some statistics from the 19th century about how many people were killed on job sites. Oh, oh. Just enormous numbers. Yes. And, uh Yep. Uh, and it's still there. Still are issues, but uh, it, uh, one part of our history is uh, when the country started to become rich. Well, it became rich partially because of slavery and the trade that was involved in all that. It was often a three-way thing involving sugar and and food and other things. But uh, uh, what happened when this country was starting to become a place producing a lot of clothing, a lot of uh, sugary products, and that was that it uh, was starting to have a surplus. And much of the way foreign policy developed was related to American politicians saying, hey, we're producing too much stuff. we got to find some international markets. And that awful period involving the Spanish-American War and all that uh, I, I, getting back to talking a bit about my father, when I was reading up some for this interview, uh, I, I saw that uh, the International Typographical Union was a supporter of the Spanish-American War, and I wondered why. And uh, uh, but among other things, they said, "Well, if we become in control of the Philippines." Uh, the language there is going to change from Spanish to English because we'll be in control, and that will keep up a lot of good jobs for printers, mm-hmm. uh, preparing textbooks for Filipinos learning English. Strange. But also during that period, uh, there was a lot that made for heavy capital to be almost unfettered in the way they did things, especially as the oil industry and the textile industries and and, uh, the steel industry and railroads all became very, very strong. And curiously, part of their becoming extremely strong had to do with the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment related to the end of slavery, but in the way the Supreme Court in this country uh, settled cases and determined things, a corporation was a person and the corporation was somehow getting the same sort of protection that uh, ex-slaves were getting. And most of the 14th Amendment in the 20th and the 19th century cases were not at all about slavery, but but about the right of, of giant trust to go unfettered in what they did, and uh, which made for a lot of awful things happening to labor. Yeah, yeah. The uh, 
my particular particular industry is the railroad. Okay. And um, uh, now I had a thought, and then of course it left me. Well, let me go back. My bona fides, I guess, would that that was I was in a union uh-huh. called the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way. Kind of a long. We were basically track workers, and that that was great. I mean, it did a it. Provided me a good living, me and my family, and healthcare, and I'm I'm glad and proud I was there. But the like you said, uh, Bob, the rail railroad industry, pretty much there. I mean, there was a lot of uh, wonderful, I guess, building across the United States. That was a big deal. It, I admire the people that were doing that, but um, a lot of people fell by the wayside for sure. Uh, you can go back to this is, of course, pre Labor Day, but the Chinese were horribly treated and basically built most of that railroad on the western side anyway. Yeah, and and on the other side were a lot of immigrants, including Irish. Very, uh, yeah, very true. And in very in true. large numbers, right? Uh, um, yeah, in, in the days of slavery, when you had the option of using an uh, Irish labor or slave labor, you picked the Irish labor because if the Irishman got injured or hurt or killed on the job, you just get another one. If a slave got injured or hurt or killed, you had to buy another one. So it was economically uh, Mm. sensible to put those Irish, and not just the Irish, I'm sure, but a lot of it. I I always kind of looked at it like a a pendulum swinging, um, like you said, turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s. I mean, the big industry, industrial revolution, basically, uh, I think that was it. Yeah, we were going gangbusters and strong and building this with steel. And looking and for lumber. markets all uh, over the world. Uh, what was that? Looking for markets all over oh, the yes. world. Oh, yes. Um, but again, at the expense of working people. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's why it started. People wanted to start organizing, making things safer, uh, better wages, living conditions. I, it, yeah, I think uh, that's obviously a good thing. And there's still trouble back and forth going. Right now, unions are, I think, few and far between. It's getting kind of... Uh, 11, 11% of the workforce right now, or yeah. it used to be as much as 30%. Yeah. Although it's interesting, I saw a poll just recently that said public acceptance of looking favorably on unions has been going up. It's like to 67%. Oh, really? Wait, oh, that I didn't know. And that, because that was, that's just I'm, this I'm last seeing week. even in the 70s today, I'm seeing reports on that. Mm-hmm. In the 70 percentile. Wow, wow. That's, that's good, good news. news. That is good news. Good news. And hotel workers in Chicago are on strike right now. <laughs> oh. I was noticing that today. Okay. Oh. So our unions are working for the people that work for them. Yeah, yeah. And curiously, they even help raise the issues for non-union workers to right. their, their their salaries necessarily oh, yeah, go of course, up. You have but, been... And uh, in California, this is rather dramatic ballot thing that passed saying that uh, uh, all uh, workers in fast food places had to get $15 an hour uh, is enormous, in fact, on the whole economy. And mm-hmm. when you think of all the people in California. So does that amount to paying uh, another 50 cents uh, for your Big Mac? I'm it, sure it, it is a big deal for prices. Well, I mean, I guess I'm no economist. That's probably the, one of the last things well, I am. Uh, but for me, it I'll, I'll gladly pay a little more. Me too. For the benefit of others. I mean, but not everybody's that way. No. If you're really pinching pennies, I suppose. Um, but I, 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 I kind of look at it as good for everybody. Well, that's why I said fifty cents. It's, it's, well, well, I would imagine that it's in a fast food joint. You just, you're not really adding a great deal onto the cost of a happy meal or whatever because of this. But I know the owners are saying, "Oh, well, then how can we do this?" Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just sort of echoing what you were saying. <laughs> well, we heard a lot of the same complaints when they outlawed smoking in bars and restaurants and airplanes. All those places that we outlawed smoking, it's like, this is going to kill our business. Yeah, and It's will. actually been quite the opposite. Yeah. One of the type of things I heard that was happening was like some pizza chains were uh, stopping their driving people, delivery people, and 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 letting it go to, you know— uh, uh, independent oh, the, drivers of uh, of the various like sorts, like Uber there. type, or, or yeah, well, I yeah. see a lot of these yeah. Dash, yeah. Well, delivery yeah. dash and, thing. Yeah. And, and so the they're they're complicating the employment of uh, of their workers who used to drive. 
but uh, uh, it, it's still a tough go if you don't have a union, obviously, because of other union protections. Uh, a shop steward who's looking out for you, uh, right. people who are uh, more committed to a long-term commitment with a, a company because its wages and benefits are decent. And mm -hmm. and uh, but anyway, the, there's. There's a little more favorability towards unions, but there's probably a long way to go before they're as powerful as they could be. Well, and one of the powers that I see with the unions, many of them contact me as a candidate. Yes. Running that want to know what my stance is or would I work with them in some of their policies that they want to get before the legislature. And of course, you tell them how you can't possibly do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every way like that. That's huge, though. I mean, right. that, that's a real big deal. And that's something that, that our unions do. Yes. What they type of things have you heard from them when they've contacted you? Uh, just wanting to know that, that I would consider supporting them and yeah. of, okay. of their, yeah. their ideas and their policies coming sure. up. And they're looking for a way to, to bridge that gap between the legislators and their union and their workers. So any any kind of um, legislation that they would want to, to get before the legislators, that has to come obviously through the legislature and they're the ones that are there bridging that gap and making that happen. So that, that's one of the many things that unions do. And back on the health and safety factor, when I first got, uh, got hired on uh, the Southern Pacific in 1979, and, I mean, back right before I got hired on, they had just come out with uh, now all the employees were uh, had to wear hard hats. But before that, everybody was out there in baseball caps and tennis shoes. And, you know, say, that's just how it was. And even some of the employees were mad at that. Mm -hmm. Hard hats, then safety glasses, then ear protection. No more open-toed shoes on the steel work toed side, shoes. right? Right. <laughs> um, and then some of it even lagged while I was working. Uh, one of our jobs was to dump ballast or rock, if you will, with these railroad cars. And the dust just comes pouring out of that thing, man. It wasn't one of the worst jobs we had. But it, it, then they found out later that that was full of silica. Mm. And a lot of the people were getting sick from that. Silicosis. So now, yeah, now, if, well, my point is, you know, it just thanks to the unions and OSHA, we had to change on that where uh, the the masks and um well other protective gear and osha is relatively recently i forget exactly when for like 1970s maybe you know, yeah it that was, wasn't that a nixon thing or was that the epa uh, that i'm thinking of uh the epa was nixon uh, osha mm, it's kind a little blurry i'm not gonna, kind of along in that uh that uh, era yeah and, and uh i was a toddler <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't but uh, uh and unions have had on and off enormous impact on democratic politics, uh, but not Republican politics. Uh, well, I think the impact for, was for, negative from Republican politics. For, uh, for, for obvious reasons. But yeah. uh, 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 the curious thing is so many working people still vote against their own interests and, and somehow – hook into the right wing thing the, about yeah that uh, about race about this becoming uh the identity nation. politics yeah and, and uh that i i saw it back in the reagan days in california well that's uh, when it, i think that's when it started the working man kind of left I, and man meaning everybody that's just that's some there were a lot of women out there yeah, doing sure. the working i, I retired oh, i retired from the alaska state troopers we had a union and uh one year, there was a guy running for governor who was pretty inept. He was not very good, and but he was very pro-gun or something that the troopers really liked. I don't remember what it was exactly. But his big thing was he was going to reduce the budget across the board by 10%. And I'd be talking to guys in the, in the, in the uh, squad room and I, who wanted to vote for him, and I said, did you ever look at what's on the top of your paycheck? You know, that's mm -hmm. the state of Alaska. You mm -hmm. want that cut by 10%? And actually, some of them said, oh, that wouldn't bother me. Uh, but that, that was a very tough place to be a union member because mm, these guys were all Republican, pretty much, and they didn't think that cops should have unions and uh, we should be dedicated and all this. So it was... Tough to get stuff done, yeah. Because nobody cared if it got done or not. 
But uh, you, you talk about the uh, unions contacting uh, politicians. The politicians love to get our endorsement. From what they used to tell us that uh, it was worth like a whole bunch more than the Carpenters Union or something to have the state troopers union uh, supporting them. Well, uh, I had a little note here. Ideally, you know, and it's gone back and forth, like I said, the pendulum. Uh, I kind of use the Detroit auto industry for an example of, I think at that time, they kind of uh, negotiated themselves out of a job way back when. Now, this is just off the top of my head, my memory. Um, and because they were also putting out at the time, I guess it was 60s or 70s maybe, kind of inferior products compared kind to of. the... Well, okay, okay. I want to be easy. Raise the auto guy. I didn't want him to jump down my throat. But anyway, the Japanese automobiles, all of that stuff. And um, the, the, the auto companies blamed the unions that they had to cut costs. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Be, because I the think union corporate was, greed is always yeah. a big factor there. Mm -hmm. But ideally, if you know, you want the company you're working for. You want profits for them, right? But we also want decent wages, I would. Uh, I'm looking big on decreasing environmental damage, uh, especially with the coal industry and the gas industry. We still can't cut these things off, uh, I, I, you know, like right now and not have it anymore. Right. We have to kind of ease our way into it. But I don't see that happening. It's always a lot of bickering and fighting. And so, you know. someday it will probably happen. You know, when you mentioned not cars, in my lifetime, when, probably, but hopefully. When, when cars became very popular and everybody could have a car, uh, all of a sudden the people that made a tack for horses and, and wagons and things like that Buggy were whips. losing their job. <laughs> Buggy whips, exactly, yeah. yeah. Right. I always talk, talk about the guy uh, who used to make uh, uh, Clovis spear points way <laughs> okay. back when. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was third generation Clovis spear point maker and was training his son to take over the job. And then some reason or other, people didn't want Clovis spear points anymore. Now, if it was up to some people, he'd still be out there chipping away at those stones. But and he was invested, just to keep, invested in that quarry to make just, those. Right, exactly. Just to just to keep a job. Brotherhood of the Clovis yes. yeah. spear point. Yeah. Now, I, now, I, now I think they call it transitioning. There you so go. When you're moving from a gas-powered vehicle to electric power, you can't change exactly. everybody at the same time. No, you right. can't. But no, when the can. goal, the target is to make that transition to some, and in the meantime, something else may come up. So yeah, we're constantly in transition in we some are. way or another. And you brought up smoking uh, a while back. Now, uh, and granted, it's a, uh, par pardon me for any smokers out there, but it's a horrible habit. We know it. But boy, did they, um, as far as smoking, that came out pretty radical. Every, you know, because when I grew up, I think we, all of us grew up, it was the cool, sexy thing to do. I smoked for a while. Um, I really smoked a pipe for a while. Eh? Just, oh, well, yeah, but uh, but cool. it came out. Did the Duke ever smoke who? on screen? John, the Duke, John, 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 Wayne? John Wayne. Yes. Oh gosh, yes. On screen, I know oh, he did in real screen. life, oh. but I can't well, recall him ever doing that. Do you remember? I could only. I don't know. I don't okay. know. But but the anti-smoking came out pretty hot and heavy, and and I guess it should have. But boy, I, I felt sorry for the people. I will say, they were just you know banished to some little cold alley to do their cigarettes, <laughs> but maybe that was the right thing. I don't know. Um, they still are, you see. I, in fact, I see, you see them out here in our alley. They're oh, yeah. smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah. So. Right. Well, our government goes to great lengths to help people quit smoking. I mean, they'll pay for the smoking cessation program for you if oh, you're interested they? in quitting. I didn't even know that. So our state state health department's pretty well, okay. crazy. Well, like hell if you want to smoke. I cannot understand how. Yeah, 10 bucks a pack. Yeah, how, how good grief. That's car payment almost. Well, That's I good. have some pretty good uh, contact friends and family that still do it. Really? But it's still a so, choice. It's yeah. a choice, I know. I know. Maybe they'll set up a... Smoking Labor Union. Anyway, yeah, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, text in, please, 541-661-4098. And then if, when you do, please let us know where you're coming from or texting from. That's always exciting. Yeah. Good to know. So. Our operator's sitting down right now, but he's uh, I'm um, ready to take your call. The phone. Would that ready. be euphemistically of standing by? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> 
So, okay. Um, and a little history, we were talking about this too before the show, about the the beginning of Labor Day was uh, the president, Grover Cleveland, in, and I have to dig up the notes here, 1894, that was the first uh, national holiday. And before, the years before the New York, wait, I think, wait, wait, wait. go ahead. 1894? Yes, yes, that was the first oh. uh, recognized National Labor okay. Day holiday. I have 1842. But well, I, I think what you're talking about is there were some... Local ones. Or, yeah, New oh, York okay. City, Chicago, Detroit, the bigger okay. cities wanted to, you know, and that uh, influenced Mr. Cleveland, I suppose, mm -hmm. to get that going on the national holiday level. Mm -hmm. A lot of the major changes and successes of labor had to do with terrible disasters. Oh, uh, yeah. The uh, Shirtwaist Fire in New York, uh, The build, uh, many of the buildings where people were working in garment-related industries were seven or eight or nine feet tall, or nine feet, nine stories tall <laughs> okay. uh, when, when that happened, and the ladders from the fire department could only reach the seventh story. And the and, doors were all locked. And the doors were supposed to be able to push outside and, and not be locked during, yeah. during work hours, but they were pushed inside and, and locked. And, uh, and also there were some uh, politically uh, powerful massacres of uh, strikers uh, in—, in wow. Uh, in Colorado and Wyoming, uh, and, and interestingly, and there were Henry Ford knocked off a couple of strikers. Oh, for sure, yeah. and, one or two, uh, one or two. And, and uh, anyway, uh, and massive uh, events in the Northwest involved uh, international workers of the world, and there, uh, and there, there were people who said, if you really want a strong union, you need a strong national movement such as they were trying to bring about. Yeah. Well, uh, many laborers were more inclined to be attracted to a route that included his own particular, if he was a carpenter or plumber or occupation, and that really divided labor in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, we now say AFL-CIO, but they used to be the two distinctly different ways of uh, organizing the uh, uh, CIO wanted uh, industry-wide representation against auto workers or steel workers or whatever, and they became pretty powerful because they took that route. While the building trades ones were successful in their own ways, but it was so much uh, 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 if you your, your local of the plumbers was dominated by one ethnic group and their relatives. Uh, Others were excluded in the process, and that happened a lot. And there was also a bigger question of relation to world issues. Uh, a lot of world issues really are Im impact on, on, on labor, but uh, uh, whether people should have gotten involved in World War I or lots of other things were, were pretty serious issues. And the American labor movement had kind of ties with the Democratic Party, uh, but at the other hand, it wasn't as powerful as it might be the Labor Party in Britain for a long time, for example. Yeah, and speaking of world, this, this is uh, a world problem that's still going on, I believe. And, of course, you can't you, uh, I'm sure they can't unionize, but I think of the countries that are doing the child labor, making, you know, uh, garments, tennis shoes. I oh, think going down big... in deep holes and wells to get. Well, to... I mean, children working long hours right. in hot or terrible conditions. I forget which the... was happening here in this country. I think many many years ago. Um, and well, and still Bob, you talk about the, uh, the somewhat pork industry, if you will, yeah. or in those. Yeah, um, and we don't have to rewind time. To see that happening, it's you know, the certain. governor of Arkansas recently has signed legislation oh, letting children that come hurts. back into yeah. very dangerous work situations. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Because we need fourteen and fifteen year olds working right. meat packing right houses again. Mm. I guess we don't bring enough tax money. We need to start getting children to yeah pay that tax. tax yeah. 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 Well, that yeah, would shock me. We can't have them just laying around going to school and stuff like learning that. learning things. Right, fourteen year old enough to start producing. 
And if I'm not mistaken, a little different off the subject a little bit, but I thought Arkansas also, didn't they reduce the marriage Eight. I think they did, yeah, to something like There's 14. There's subject, yeah. That's, that's pretty bizarre. Okay, I just wanted to throw that in. As there. long as the whole country doesn't say, I'm Arky, you're Arky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're... So uh, I think, uh, we may have kids going back to work, but I, I don't think they're going to be working the 12, 20, 12 and 7 like they did back in the day. And it wasn't just kids. People work in the mines for 12 hours a day, breathing that mm-hmm. air and... And, uh, and and it's funny how many of them uh, did not like or still don't like the idea of wearing masks and things like that and just think that's silly to have the safety regulations. We, well, we had a crew working on our house a few years ago, and they pretty much had to rebuild the, a garage wall and some other things. And, and uh, they none of them were wearing hearing protection or dust masks or anything, and they were working with this. Uh, kind of mm-hmm. <laughs> this siding that's so popular around here now that's like is, is cement, and it puts out an awfully toxic and awfully bad dust, and it is incredibly fine. It's not like sawdust; it just creates clouds. And these guys weren't wearing masks or anything. And I, I asked one of the one that doesn't the company require it? Oh yeah, they do, but. Nobody says anything. Yeah. Mm. Easy to slough off, I guess. Yeah. The uh, other thing about this crew, my wife was putting uh, uh, things out in the garage for them to snack on, and at the, and at the end of the day, they'd still be there. And so she asked one of the uh, the boss one day why they weren't eating them. This guy said, oh, that stuff's too healthy. And I'm not, I'm talking about, like, I'm, I'm not talking about celery sticks or something. This was stuff that was not too healthy. But so, so then she started putting out Oreos and like that. Oh, there. <laughs> Dorito <laughs> coated, coated with the dust that they were. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Wow. Hey, well, we're gosh, we're halfway through. I just want to let everybody know you are listening to KCIW uh, here in Brookings, Oregon, uh, 100.7 FM, all volunteer radio station, and we're my uh, this operator is still standing by waiting for a text. <laughs> Five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Hey, let me tell you another quick story about these workers. I, I was uh, there was one of them working on something overhead, the, putting it into a garage door or something, and he's chipping away at something with a chisel or something, and he's getting pieces of wood kicked back in his face all the time. And I was standing up my workbench, so I, I had some safety glass there, and I went over and handed them to him, and he says, "Oh, I have some in the truck. Don't worry about it." So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. However, like I said, I guess if some of the railroad workers could still, they'd be wearing baseball caps and tennis shoes. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> and those the, regulations, I hear lots of complaints about that. We need to reduce the regulations. But then when you get something yes. in your eye or lose a foot, yeah, all of a right. sudden it's a problem that nobody told you right. it's a problem. Yeah. Historically, the biggest strides for labor were done during the days of the New Deal, the, the Roosevelt presidency. Mm-hmm. The National Labor Relations point, Board yeah. was created, the uh, mechanisms for uh, unions to get recognized and appeal processes and uh, uh, other major goals were a result of uh, uh, the terrible impact of the Depression on non-working people especially. Yeah. Know? Yeah, and uh, but uh, some people are still trying to fight those those advances, and we still have things like the quote uh, right to life, uh, or I mean right to work uh, initiatives that uh, basically are saying that uh, people should be able to take a free ride on the gains that are brought by union people working together. That right to work, and we talked about that a little before the show, but I, I'm still unclear on some of that. It's basically. Let's say you're working for a corporation, Corporation B, whatever, and uh, there's a union. Mm-hmm. You have a choice to either work for the union, pay dues, or not work for the union. Well, in, in many cases, you 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 can say I'm not a union member, but you have to pay the dues anyway. But the the right to work idea is that they wouldn't have to pay the dues anyway, okay, and therefore really weaken the union. I just, uh, I don't know. I and mean, of course, I get, they get the benefits that the union yeah, provide right. anyway. Yeah, yeah I, I had a, a a teacher that, you know, just worked through 
strikes just because he didn't believe in striking. Okay, and, and, okay. Well, uh, he was not greeted very friendly by me <laughs> and other teachers in the process. And how long, Bob, were you teacher's union? Um, in the 23 years okay. or so. Okay, yeah. okay. Boy, they... And it's funny how... Why, why is it that there's been a mood... Uh, teachers are not treated very well lately, it doesn't seem to me. Well, they haven't been for a long time. I don't think well, that's... They, they, wanted, they wanted more money <laughs> or more... Uh, and and uh, all I mean, of a sudden, all the people on Fox News were saying, "Well, my mother was a teacher, and it was a part-time job. She just she gets home by three o'clock." Yeah, and, I, I mean, again, I'm a product of the public. Uh, maybe we all are public education. I, I I look back on it pretty fondly. We all have issues, of course, but um, it saddens me that they're uh, created as almost uh, uh, negative. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot of the mentality that people that can do, people can't teach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, I, that I, I heard that. <laughs> you can't teach, you can't teach, teach, teach Jim. Jim. Okay, we got it. Yeah. All right, all right. And, and uh, in some societies, it's one of the highest respected professions. Uh, I feel uh, it should be. And uh, but, but part of it has to do with payment and that. I, In my own personal case, I had no children and was married to a lawyer. So I didn't necessarily have <laughs> to make a whole lot of money. Okay. But, uh, uh, and I'm glad I did, and I made some really positive impacts on a lot of kids' lives, I think. Right. But, uh, but uh, I was, uh, you know, even after 20 years of teaching, I was making something like $25, $30 an hour, which wasn't all that much. You know, I have several, fr for some reason or other, there seems to be a lot of teachers here. I have several friends who are retired teachers, and... When they talk about their work, they talk about what they did for the kids, and and uh, that was their job to 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 get these kids to learn algebra or whatever. Well, yeah, the, it's, there's nothing quite like seeing the success like a year's late. I I don't run into former students bunch in Brookings, but I certainly did in Oakland, uh -huh. and uh, you know the they. They were impacted in one way or another by me, and they liked it, and they remembered it always. And I have a lot of fond memories of my teachers from uh -huh. the past. I, I do. I have some negative ones, too. Well, <laughs> so do I. But most yeah. of them are positive. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. And then the, with the teachers, um, the big problem I realize or I think now is because the wages are so low, where they want to teach, they can't even live near uh, the school that yeah, and some school districts, especially in California, are trying to build their own housing for their teachers, and that's a good idea because... Uh, I think we might be seeing more of that in the near future. Uh, out of the South how, I know we have that issue in our own county here. Yeah, yeah. yeah is, right. Is retaining teachers. Yeah. Just right. not being able to find a place to live, much much less being able to afford it, but mm -hmm. finding a place to start with. Yeah. I have a friend who's looking for a house who has who is ready to spend a half a million dollars and they can't find anything that's that's worth living in. Right. Well, well that's that's another we've done a show on that. That's probably another show coming up yeah. housing and yeah. Put that on your list. I will. I will. <laughs> Got that down. So hey everybody, we're still waiting for that first text. Uh, if you're out there with questions or comments, five four one six six one four zero nine eight. It's not any radio station you can have textual intercourse with. <laughs> this, this one you can. <laughs> I think Bob was waiting for that one. Yes, right. yes. I, I, I used it once before. That's good. <laughs> Still works. Yeah. yeah. That was you may not be able to get certain books out of the library, but you can have textual intercourse <laughs> with us. Right on. Beautiful. Yeah, so I guess for most people, you know, Labor Day, even me being a, a laborer, if you will, in my life, Labor Day weekend, it was just coming up. Do we really think about most of the... I, I had to look up myself when what initiated Labor Day. I had no idea until a day ago looking up some research. All I knew is I got double time and a half if I worked. And right. and being a job that and, that required people to be out there, I frequently did work right. on holidays. And people felt sorry for me. Oh, you have to work on... Yeah, it's really... Yeah, uh, wait till my paycheck thing. comes in. <laughs> I know. Yeah, the railroad was the That's same That's the worst thing. part of being retired. I get the same pay oh, for, what? for holidays as I get. Yeah, we should be getting a pretty good uh, increase today working on uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. <laughs> the high wages. Well, we're getting holiday wages for this. Huh? Right on. Right. Right on. So Bob did mention 
the difficulties that workers, tradespeople especially, have gone through over the years to make sure that we have protections. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A lot not, of just, not just vacation time, but our work hours and weekly work schedules. Vacations, uh, yeah. Day, and pregnancy I, leaves. I've never been a uh, union member. Yeah. Uh -huh. I will say that out loud, but I know you have been. And I doubt any union member looks forward to being on strike. Oh, no. That's uh, a tool in your toolbox for that's the last thing you got to do to like twist an arm. To the first three days of 1986 for me uh, was my mother died, my union went on strike, and I got a note in the mail that we were being edit, uh, audited for our income tax, <laughs> all within the first three days wow. of 1986. Fun week for you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. And, and, uh, but but the, the power or the ability to strike is basic to the powers of unions to negotiate decent wages, right. working conditions, and so forth. And sometimes that has to be done. Yeah, Who could strike became an issue for a long, long time. Many years in many places, public employees could not strike. In California, that was not, uh, that was true even to the early 70s or late 60s. And uh, a lot of other things just uh, were not resolved well for them. My memory is fading a bit uh, these days, but I remember in the rail industry, I think in 34 years, I can kind of remember a couple of strikes that were supposed to happen, but the government intervened because the rail industry was important for the... It would uh, cripple the economy yeah. to have that turn on now, even I, for a day. Reagan fired a bunch of uh, air, air traffic and traffic control, control, which was yeah. an alleged reason. Bad. Yeah. We, uh, uh, the union I was in, of course, we, uh, being the cops, we couldn't strike. But uh, So we uh, settled uh, any kind of uh, arbitration problems with uh, uh, arbitration. And it, we, we always went to arbitration. I mean, we sent people to the to negotiate with the state, and the state would, would we could never get it together, so it always went to arbitration. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one year, we... Uh, we we got a contract and and we were funded year to year. Each uh, each legislature funded us again. So the next legislature said they weren't going to honor that contract because they didn't sign it. They didn't have anything to do with it, mm -hmm. and we had to go all over again. Yeah. And and it wasn't like these contracts that we had were were taking the guts out of anybody or anything. Right. We were being paid a decent wage to 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 a job that was in many ways very hazardous and uh, problems in other ways. So uh, we were paid, I think, probably more than most police departments, but everybody in Alaska gets paid more than. <laughs> you were working in Alaska. That's a 24-7 job, but yeah. your weather's like yeah. pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Oh, yeah. Get a break from that. Hazardous pay, driving around in that hazard pay. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, or I think about that every now and then that, you know, I, I'll start off for some place and I won't have to worry about the snowstorm or anything. But I did a couple of years ago coming back from uh, from Medford get caught in a snowstorm. And uh, it took me over five hours. I was driving my Thunderbird, which is mm -hmm. you, you not only don't want to even think about getting a scratch even anywhere near it. And I'm driving a car that is totally not made for snow. <laughs> Through the mountains, in, a, in an area, I have to say that that I don't think the people here that do the snow snow plowing uh, have it down yet. I mean, mm -hmm. in Alaska, this would not have been a problem at all. We all just would have zipped home, but three or four inches of snow on the road, and it was just awful. Till I got to the like the other side of the mountains or something where they had it sanded, and boy, I could kick it over fifteen miles an hour. Well, we don't get a lot of practice here with that. No, no, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the, the the car I was driving is is just not made for snow. It's made to be on the road, but not with snow on the road. Did you at least have the top up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just it, check it. it, it the, 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 <laughs> the other night we came out of the um, um, open mic, which I should give a, a call out to or a shout out to the open mic at the uh, at the brewery every Thursday night. Uh, if you have a talent, you can sing or do something. Uh, you can come up there and they'll check put the you. Yeah, yeah, put you on stage. And, Great place, man. Yeah, and lots of good people are just hanging out there, and it's free. Uh, is talent and, talent required? 
I'm sorry? Is talent required? We can give it a shot. It's open mic, well, right? Um, I would say about 97%. Every now and then you, you find a reason to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but, but no, but some of the people are really professional. They're very, very good. And some of them do get paid for gigs when they're not doing that. Right. Okay, the reason I brought that up. <laughs> uh, back to Labor Day. I, I, le I left the house to go, and it was like, I don't know, 70-something degrees and sunny, and I walk out in the garage, and I have an option of taking the convertible or taking the electric car, and I said, oh, the hell, well, then I just took the electric car. And when we came out of that thing, it was it was a mist. It was so heavy, it was like rain, you know, and, the, oh, I've been in I've been like that and, last couple of days. <laughs> and, and that car, it's a pain to put the top up and take it down. But anyway. That's uh, my labor story. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, not to harp on any, uh, well, we've done both, but a little bad issue is the labor, especially the unions. I'm thinking back east, uh, of course, the great movie about it now. I can't think of the name of it, Marlon Brando. On, on the, the water, On the waterfront. Yes. You know, a lot of bad influences, bad influences on some of those unions back there. Yeah. And I don't know if that's still a problem or not. You know, probably in those days, it really those was days, like that. I think I mean, it was. That's a rough part of the world, too. You bet. Yeah, and you a rough bet. job. Yeah. And now it's all containers. <laughs> so, well, right. They don't yeah. probably have those. They don't walk around with a hook like they used to. No, no. So. Uh, I can remember that was one of the jobs when, when I was a kid going to high school and not planning on going to college that was that was an option to me, you know, to yeah. go work on a, on a, on, a, on the docks or... Uh, uh, the, the the really good one was was um, work for for the airlines, loading baggage and okay. stuff like that because you could steal so much stuff. That <laughs> <laughs> That's a plus. And yeah. that, and they 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 had like a union like um, a, a friend a friend of mine's brother or somebody worked there and they and they were loading or doing something and in the plane they saw a scorpion, shut down work. They all just sat on their butts for I don't know how long until flame was fumigated, and but still got paid. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Because of a bug. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And there, uh, labor itself. I mean, we talk about labor. Labor itself. There's just not a lot of that left. I don't think anymore. You know uh, the 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 railroads in in Alaska used to have very powerful um, union, and okay. they had rules like. Uh, uh, well, not only time, but if like if you if you drove the train more than oh, they're this under hours of service. yeah, you went on to another pay. Is that is that still existing? Well, I, uh, I wasn't in that department, but yeah. we always we always looked at them like you know they were the 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 important people. Yes, and we were. Yeah, they always had that. Um, and I was lucky towards the end of my career. I was driving a truck at the time. And that fell under the hours of service there, yeah. Because I couldn't work. And <laughs> let me tell you, in the uh, older part of that, those days, if you were on a like a big train derailment, and there was enough of those, mm -hmm. you could work as long as you could <laughs> yeah. stand. But I, I, I kind of used that rule as my weapon because if they wanted me to, hey, well, we, you got to go back and load more material or whatever, I'd say, you know, I I can't because I could only work ten hours. Yeah, and. And and come on, that's uh, that's really logical. I think you don't want to be driving a truck, yeah, on the highway sweet. or a train, yeah. you know, uh, without uh, proper rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, an interesting thing is a lot of the major battles in labor history are from the Northwest, and oh. and uh, in Portland uh, there was a strike involving shipping, and uh, uh, it was major, major event, and uh, uh, at the heart of it became the fact that a railroad uh, series of tracks went to a port in Oakland, and if the railroad could get to the port, then the strike would be hurt. Well, the strikers effectively stopped the railroad from, from doing that, and that was a big part of the international longshoremen and warehouse union becoming a powerful force. How, how long ago was that, do you remember? Uh, 1920s or 30s. Oh, gosh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, I don't remember that, but okay, now I know why. <laughs> Back a little bit. No, no, no. And, and uh, there, were, there were other, uh, in Spokane, there were some major, uh, I was surprised to learn about that, and, and San Francisco had a general strike, 
and uh, uh, w- before the protections of of the of the Roosevelt era, though those those strikes were extremely important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I just for fun, Rick. I know you're you're the research guy, Ooh. but I have this fun little thing on my phone, Jet Cat, uh, Chat GPT. Okay. And so I asked, you know, in, in Curry County, what might we run into as far as unions? Oh, in okay. Curry County. And so All it right. spit this back to me. Specific unions active in the area could include, so I'll underline could, the Oregon Education Associ- Association, the OEA. Teachers. Service Employees International Union, the SEIU, SEIU which be. most of us are probably familiar with. Yeah. American yeah. Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME. So that represents public sector employees and state, county, and municipal levels. Um, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I'm familiar with that one. Wow. Um, United Food Food and Commercial Workers, the UFCW, um, and the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, ILWU. But Uh, that tends to, you know, we see those in ports and and other related industries. That's all within Curry County? Yeah. Might include. Might include. Uh, And and when you mentioned the food workers, it's interesting that uh, Freddy's is not unionized. It is in most of the state. And and in fact, there are no idea. Our Brookings Freddy's is not is not not, not union. I, I uh, did not know that. While that union right now is trying to challenge the merger with Safeway and Albertsons and yep. and, and and others, and uh, uh, there there's actually talk of a strike in the Portland area uh, related to that merger. But uh, Freddy's. I, I don't know if they're paid less or if they're paid the same or I didn't what have you, but the, they're they're definitely not a part of the union. Okay, not that I didn't house. know. Uh, we do have a text. I'm going to read a text. Okay, and it says, "Thank God, the labor landscape has changed from our childhood. Young people now are incredulous when you tell them that jobs used to be listed in the classifieds as men wanted and women wanted." Uh-huh. I was hard pressed for a job after college in 1971, so I stopped at a glass factory that had a help wanted sign. When I asked, I was told that there were no jobs available. I told them that I was asking for my husband. They heartily encouraged me to send him by. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) There you go. Okay. Well, thank you for that text. I can remember when when they were talking about women... uh, uh, started to do some men jobs, and they would they would sh- show pictures of Moscow and Russia, where women were driving bulldozers, things like that. Would seem so foreign to us. Well, in the yeah, it, it, when I first got hired on the railroad, I, there were I don't remember any women on our track labor force, but when I retired. There were, and there were you know truck drivers and bulldozer operators and all of that stuff. We had about two in the whole state. I don't okay. Know, I, I worked with, uh, in fact, I went to the through the academy with both of them, and uh, they worked out fine. It's you know, people. The one was, I don't think she was five six, but she was a tiger. She was tough and she was and she knew what she was doing. And uh, you know, when women started first becoming cops, they said, "Well, how can a woman get in a fight and this and that?" You don't get invites, you know. You try, you try to. You I, I'm weapon. very proud of the fact that uh, in my 20 year career, I was in one fight, and I caused it. I, oh, did, wow. I was a brand new rookie, and I did something stupid. I could have avoided it, and and I worked with a partner for many years. She's still my friend, and uh, she could just calm the situation down if we went on a domestic thing or we did whatever, and she just just had this way about her of just. Right. She took Doing that class that, d- diplomacy for police officers, right? It took a – well, <laughs> you know, you, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember if we had any classes in de-escalation. <laughs> we must have, but I do, I, I do not remember them. I um, bet you they are now. Boy, I hope so. It doesn't seem like de-escalation is six rounds. You know. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that can work, the old mode. And <laughs> but, yeah, the, uh, the women were doing just fine. The, now – we kind of had this mandate, sort of, to to uh, to have a certain percentage of this, a certain percentage of that. I don't know if that still goes on with affirmative action type stuff, but we hired some people who just couldn't do it. Uh, they, uh, we, we, you gave them a shot. 
Yeah. Well, did they fade we had, out we after that? In the pot. We had uh-huh. to we had to hire a certain percentage of Alaska natives, as an example, or recruit recruit. I I didn't mind the recruiting. I didn't I didn't like seeing people who um, weren't capable of doing the job hired. You know, in in Alaska at that time, there were, a lot of the villages were extremely remote, and we yeah. would hire people out of these, and we hired people that didn't have a driver's license and things like that, which was one of the requirements and could not literally come and work effectively in the Anchorage area because they really had never been exposed to that type of thing before. Yeah. So that was the kind of thing I objected to. But Well, I mean, of course, that's a whole other show with affirmative action, but I mm-hmm. I, I, I certainly see reasons for that. Uh, oh, I mean, even the railroad had, had some of that. I didn't mind affirmative recruitment. I didn't okay. didn't like the idea of us well, yeah, filling yeah. slots just because they no, especially okay. in the uh, law enforcement. For and it did thing. nobody any good. You know, the no. the department wasted a lot of money and wound up letting somebody go eventually who left them. I'm sure with a lousy feeling for the rest of their life. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Another I mean, thing we haven't mentioned is the relationship between the labor movement and civil rights. Uh, oh, that's pretty big. Uh, well, it's pretty big, and uh, there were problems that some unions were pretty blatantly racist because of their restrictive policies. Sure. Uh, but there were some that were very important in the civil rights struggle, uh, including United Auto Workers Union. Farm workers. Uh, farm workers. Uh, and in, in the case of United Auto Workers, Walter Ruther was one of the key speakers at the March on Washington I happen to have attended it and remember how eloquent his speech was. Wow. And uh, uh, the ILWU always had a good record, and most of the public employee uh, unions had good records, teachers and and that. But uh, some unions were pretty damn exclusive in, in what they wanted in their membership, and and it's too bad that that's part of our history. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, thankfully, it's part of our History, history, not I hope, what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, and and it should be brought to the attention of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not to forget part of our history. Yeah. Boy, we're winding down here in time, so we could. Uh, yeah, if you want to get one of those texts in, better hurry, so you can become famous. Five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Couple a uh, couple minutes to go. So final thoughts, I guess, on, like I said, Labor Day, most everybody probably went barbecuing, partying on the beach. I, I don't know. I had a friend say that she was on the beach yesterday. This beach is in Southern California Beach, man. No, and no. There were people with swimming suits and going out, and I don't know, <laughs> just a different different place. But I know why they want to be here, because it's paradise. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, people actually go in that water. I yeah. see that all yeah. the time. I know. I don't no, no way. I, I, I was I was walking on the sidewalk there one day, and there was a little girl, oh, I don't know, maybe like three, four, something okay. like that, on a blanket, and her, you could see her mother, well, I assume was her mother, was out swimming, but the girl had two pit bulls with her, so I think that she was just very well taken care of. Oh, well. Yeah, nobody's going to bother. With that, I she had her own <laughs> security <laughs> detail, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Well, I think where we're going lately with... Um, our current administration at the the national level working to from the middle out and the bottom up to yeah. make sure that our families yeah. and both people there. are taken care of and people are feeling ambitious and joyful yes. Yes. and exuberant right yes, now and I looking am. forward to making this happen. <laughs> I think and we are. We're right. seeing some great turnaround in our, the, our unions from what I can see yeah. statistically. Mm-hmm. Some really good things happening. I hope it sticks and I we gotta get over this little hump. And with the infrastructure and the chips and all that going on, there's a lot more jobs developing in this country right now. Yeah, you bet. A lot of work to be had. So, well, thank you all for listening to our Labor Day spiel. Thank you for having us. And, uh, yeah, I love having both both guests today, uh, Robert O'Sullivan and Brett Cecil, along with our hey, Payless Leader Ray. And, and uh, you have, I think, one more day. And then you got to start putting away. Then we got to yeah, go back to work. <laughs> gotta, no, you got to start putting your white clothes away. Oh, you, it, Ray, it's really great. Great folk model. If you want to say, why don't I like my white garnet clothes? <laughs>